Hello all, Yesterday's Airlines here and you are tuning in for another video discussing the latest release announcements and today it is the turn of Gemini Jets with their June 2023 set and Gemini have had an interesting year. Last month releases were surprisingly diverse. They had that Air Mauritius 747SP, which really stood out. But obviously, for American collectors, the introduction of the 767-400 model was probably the big talking point. But it did turn out that Gemini's releases last month were probably a bit more interesting than NG's releases, um, which is a disappointing sign of the way things are going when that happens. But can they do it two months in a row? Stay tuned and let's find out. Before you do though, subscribe to the channel and check me out at Instagram as well, at Yes to Airlines. There's always lots of cool content coming along. If you haven't seen this week, I've been pumping out three different articles discussing NG Models production, looking at the favorite airlines that they produce, looking at what they've been up to in 2023, and then also looking at sorry state of their classics releases so been doing plenty of work in that space but i look across all the manufacturers in 400 scale and try and keep a breadth of the entire scale so there's always cool stuff coming to the website yes there's airlines check that out but now let's get on and get through gemini jets june announcements So it's a fairly standard month numbers wise from Gemini. There are 10 models, 11 if you include the flaps up and flaps down version as separate models for the 777. And when you look at the airlines that have been released here, then there's not a lot of surprises. We've got Alaska, we've got American, you've got BA, you've got Delta, you've got Lufthansa, you've got Southwest, you've got United. It's not too surprising. It's not necessarily a major issue, but it's not necessarily perfect either. However, I've missed out a couple of airlines from the list and those ones are potentially a bit more interesting. But we will start as always in these videos by going from the Airbuses through to the Boeings and then anything that's left over at the end. So the first model up this month is an Airbus A321neo the registration is N421 Uniform Whiskey. It's the second time that Gemini have released an A321neo. They made one in 2019. Nothing has fundamentally changed with the mold since then. It will still have these overly sized engines that almost touch the ground and are somewhat out of scale with the real thing so you can get a good idea what this new release will look like simply by looking at the old one and then if you dare comparing it to a real a321 neo uh it's it's not completely awful i guess but it's not great uh the sh not just the engines the general form of the nose and the nose gear are not spectacular as well but the engines are probably the deal breaker for me it's just not really good enough for a 2023 mold and I would like JC Wings to upgrade or replace this A321 mold um, so, it can, so it can compete really um, with the Panda and NG and HYJL versions so when you've got three much superior versions out there in the marketplace and even the Aero Classics one's better it's just they can't put it together sensibly um, then you know, it's time to, to look at refreshing this. The only mold which is inferior in the HB21 Neo space is the Phoenix version. So for me, this one is gonna be gas guzzling. Yeah, you may want an A321 Neo, but it's hardly not the case that someone else is gonna make it. NG have been making lots of this kind of really boring <laughs> standard American releases recently. They'll probably do it soon. Isn't it? Anyway, um, so yeah, I just wait around for a better one myself, but hey, I consider this to be a, a gas guzzler. The second model up is a Lufthansa A33300 uh, DAIKQ. It's wearing this Fan Hansa diversity wind scheme. And if it seems at all familiar, it's because it has been made this year already by NG Models. Now, last month, 
in the Gemini release set, two of the 10 or so models had already been made by Gemini. The Air France A320 was one of those, and I think the other one was the Copa Retro Colors 737. So this month there are actually three models that have already been made by NG. I just don't really understand this copying of each other's releases. I guess there's a good chance that these Gemini ones have been out or been built for a while, but it's annoying on both sides really um, that we're getting so much replication because obviously Gemini don't even make that many models month on month. And NG are producing a lot of models that other people are already made. So it's a bit annoying. In this space, the NG version is going to be better because they've got a better mold. As simple as that. I don't really know why you wouldn't have already bought it if you wanted it. Not really sure where this one is going to fit in people's collections. Maybe just those people who don't know that NG models exist. There must be some of them out there, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's going to be a distinctly middling Gemini release. Uh, I'm going to put this one in to Workhorse. Nothing to see there, really. Third model of the month is a Delta 717 N988AT. Obviously, this is not the first Delta 717 that Gemini have made. It will, in fact, be the fifth. Having said that, it is only the second which is being made on this mould, a better mould than the original mould, which had a much larger wing seam on it. So this will potentially be quite nice. And the last one isn't really recent. I think it was also released back in 2018. So there's a few models this month which are effectively re-releases um but re-releases from four or five years ago so there's probably a space in the market for them obviously nobody else really releases 717s so it is actually quite nice to see this i i get a feeling this one will sell well and i actually quite like this little mad dog mold so yeah maybe i'm biased in this case uh, i'm gonna actually give this one high flyer which is perhaps undeserved since there's already been a version of it out on this mold but that looks really nice. It's been quite a long time. Delta always sells well. I think this one will be good. Model number four in this release set is a 737-400. It is in the colors of Kalita Charters, N405 Charlie Kilo. Now this Kalita Charters carrier, which is obviously an offshoot of the Connie Kalita American International, is not particularly exciting. I think they do a lot of business with the American government. The aircraft is a freighter. The livery is lackluster. It's just got, uh, it really needs a tail logo. <laughs> really needs a tail logo. Um, so there's nothing really to see there. I can understand why American collectors, you know, would be perhaps interested, but I'm not really interested in cargo airlines. When we look at the mold itself for the JC737-400, it's okay. It's not bad. They've done a KLM version recently, which I own. I quite like it. I reviewed it at the site, actually, so check out that review. But the mold isn't going to win any awards. It's a very old mold that's been updated. The aerials that have been added are a little too large, as is often the case with JC. It sits at a slightly funny angle. Um, I've seen some people claim that the nose on this is better than the nose on the Panda version, but that's not true. The nose on this is a bit too... Um, pointy for my tastes it's not as good anyway the undercarriage is nowhere near as good it really doesn't stack up as well as the panda 7400 having said that it's fine it's fine and i am not against the release of 77400s but i'm not especially for the release of this carrier because it's just really boring cargo airline check boring rubbish livery check boring <laughs> it's just it's not very interesting so for me this one not doing much though i imagine there are plenty of people who will like it I'm not one of them. I'm going to put it in workhorse. Model number five is a Southwest Airlines 77 Max 8. The aircraft is in the Canyon Blue Retro N872 Charlie Baker. And again, this is another model which NG have made already and did a really nice job on. So I'm not sure the Gemini version is going to be better. There's probably space for it in the market because Southwest is very popular. 
Gemini Mold is good. Um, perhaps not quite as good as the NG, but it's still very nice. So I'm sure it'll be fine, but there's not a lot to say here. This one's crying out to be workhorse made before on a better mold. Again, typically it's quite hard for Gemini to come out with models after NG and for them to be better than NG's version. That's just the reality of the situation. Next up is also a model that's been made before, but this one hasn't been made by NG. So Gemini have got a much better opportunity here. This one is a Max 9, Alaska Airlines, N915 Alpha Kilo. It is in the Seattle Krakens color, which is a nice special scheme. And this one has been made already by Aero Classics this year, I think it was this year. And it looked okay, but obviously the Aero Classics Max mold has a whole selection of weaknesses which um, damage it, the least of which aren't that it doesn't have aerials or particularly good gear, but there's plenty of other things that are wrong with it. I'm not gonna go into that too much. The important point here is that there's no reason on earth why this Gemini version shouldn't be better. The last Max 9 they produced was also the Special Schemes, the Killer Whale version, in Alaska colors and that looked really nice. The mold is really nice, the finish was really nice. Overall, it looks like an excellent product, really good release and actually a very attractive model. And I have no reason to think that this one won't also be really, really good because I imagine that they'll also get the colors better than AC did too. So for me, this one is the release of the month so far. Nobody else has made it outside of that Aero Classics version. There's going to be plenty of market space for it. It's not been made by NG already. Supersonic, this one, I think this one will turn out really nice. And it's the sort of model that I kind of wish I had a reason to buy. So that's six of the releases down. We've got four more to go. And the next one up is a 767-300 Delta Airlines. So really standard kind of release from Gemini. They've made lots of Delta 767-300s before. They've made them using moldable molds actually, even the wing-leaded versions, they've made them using the old Phoenix mold, which is seamless. They've made them using the older JC Gemini mold, which is not, but actually a marginally probably a better mold. So this isn't new in any stretch. The last version of this was again released probably a few years ago now, 2018 again. So it's been five years, but they made versions previously to that. They made one in 2015. They made one, um, I think, also before that too in 2013. So they make one every few years. I guess they they sell. I'm sure there are lots of people who want to buy them. This one is registered N1201 Papa. Nothing more to say really. I'm sure it'll be fine, but it's not new. The mold isn't spectacular. It's a perfectly workhorse model, which will fill a good gap in some people's collections, but most people who've been around the houses a few times will already have an example. Model number eight is the 767-400 for this month. And this one is in the Unicon colors, the United Continental Merger Scheme. The reg of the aircraft is N69059. <clears throat> I'm still not quite sure to say about the 767400 mold. Haven't really seen any good or detailed pictures of it. The ones I have do suggest there are issues with the length of the undercarriage and the wing angle. Other people have called out engine related problems and some people have complained about the cockpit printing. I don't know if those issues are real or not because I just haven't seen enough pictures of the mold. I've been tempted to buy it just so I can see it more clearly, but Gemini models take ages to get to the UK and it hasn't arrived here yet. So I'm not entirely certain about the mold, although it looked okay. This one in the Unicom scheme has been made previously by Herpa and their release also looked okay. The mold is okay. It's maybe better than okay, but it's not spectacular. So not entirely sure whether it's worth replacing with this one. I don't think the Herpa one had aerials on it. I know that does excite some people for no apparent reason. This one will probably have more detailed undercarriage too than Herpa. But is it so much better it needs replacing? Don't know. 
lots of people get excited about these 7400s and I want to be slightly patronising <laughs> because it's not an exciting aeroplane it's not at all exciting <laughs> it's a 767 that they stretched slightly and didn't sell anything off it's not exciting but yeah I'm still going to put this one in high flyer I can't put these in supersonic I don't know if the mould is good enough and until I've looked at one in more detail, don't know. But generally, I don't care what I think. They'll probably keep on releasing one of these each month for the next little while, and I'm sure they'll sell. There's plenty on market for them. But is there plenty of market for more British Airways One World 777s? That's a question that Gemini are asking, because the next release, model number nine, is G Yankee Mike Mike Romeo. Flaps up and flaps down, but it's the same model that Gemini released. Uh, sorry, NG released twice recently. In fact, they've even released this Reg. Um, there is a couple of One World Triple Sevens. Their version looked good. I think a bit critical of the NG Triple Seven, but I think that they've made changes. It looks better. Hopefully, I'll be receiving one or two soon and might review some. I like the JC Triple Seven as well. It will make an interesting comparison. Don't know if it would be better. Don't really care, to be honest, because it's a model that's already been made perfectly well by NG. So that's three models this month that NG have made already. Don't really know why Gemini are making them other than... But it's their company. They can make what they like. But what should I do with this? I'm just going to put it in Workhorse. It'll be lovely, but it's also unnecessary. Um, so just Workhorse. And that leaves just one model of the month to discuss. That is neither Airbus or Boeing, and it is Dutch, or it's Dutch made. Anyway, it is a Fokker 100, and it's in the colors of TAM, P-T-M-R-A, so presumably their first Fokker 100. And this is a lovely scheme, a classic 90s TAM, back when they were just a little airline with the blue tail, really attractive and I really like the Fokker 100 as an aircraft type it's not got that much love in 400 scale in fact there are only including this one been 21 releases over a long time but Gemini have released um, the model on and off in recent times they made a couple of Alliance versions and a Qantas Link version in the last three or four years I think that the last one actually was out last year yep it was the Alliance Southern Cross Minor Colours version and they all look quite nice no major issues with them the only possible area of complaint is the shape of the cockpit windows looking at that Southern Cross Minor version not quite perhaps the right shape but it's not the end of the universe and the model overall looked nice this is the standout model of the month for myself it's unique Nobody else has made it. Nobody else even has access to the mould except for JC who don't use it or aren't allowed to use it. I'm not sure which. And really interesting release. Like the Emirates just last week, Gemini can still whip out the odd, unusual and more global and slightly classic airline. This one is excellent and I've got no reason not to be putting this one up in supersonic alongside that Alaska 737 MAX. So that's two models up in supersonic this month and a couple also in high flyer for a batch of 10 releases. It's not a bad outcome, I would say. Overall, it's a solid month from Gemini. The airlines aren't particularly exciting, but there's some decent models in there. I would prefer they didn't release the same things that NG did or vice versa, frankly, NG. I'd rather you didn't release the same things that Gemini did because it's just often unnecessary and decreases the diversity of the scale. But it's unlikely that either of them are going to see this space and most of these airlines are in their top 10 release airlines. And we suffer somewhat, um, the collectors, due to this lack of diversity. But here and there, you've got some signs of interest with the TAM and at least Kalita Charters, even though I think it's boring, has got 
uh, only one other release, and that's Gemini. So, yeah, not bad overall, actually. And a couple of models, again, that I would strongly consider possibly even getting myself. So, actually, I think that Gemini have been doing pretty well this year, from my perspective. And I look forward to seeing what this Tam Fokker is going to end up looking like. I really hope to be acquiring that one. So thanks very much for listening, guys. I hope you enjoy the video and are excited by some of the models from this month's Gemini batch. I'll see you next time from yesterday's airlines. It's goodbye for now.